So today we are trying to get 40 different species on camera. So that can be inverts, it can be birds, it can be reptiles, whatever we can find, as long as we get it on camera, it counts for the challenge. We're here with our friend Mikey from the channel Cool Critter. So Mike, do you want to introduce what you do? Yeah, uh, so basically I just make pretty fast-paced nature content. I show a as many species as I can per video, a bunch of highlight species, uh, some cool snakes, lizards, insects, uh, mostly dragonflies, uh, and birds on my channel. So if you like that content, then please subscribe. All right, let's get after it. Finding 40 different species of animals in a limited window of time may sound ambitious, but that is light work as far as South Florida is concerned. The biodiversity here is incredibly dense, so much so that before we had even gathered our thoughts for a formal presentation segment, we had already seen about a dozen species. What you are going to see in this video is a collection of the best shots we got of each species added to the challenge total in chronological order. Our morning started with this beautiful red-bellied woodpecker, and as we started walking along the edge of a large lake in the center of this park, we started racking up species fast. Searching for invertebrates and birds around water is usually a very productive strategy, and in no time at all we spotted some incredible species. The iconic white ibis was the next animal to catch our eye, followed by some equally recognizable and charismatic water birds. The vegetation that lines the lake shore is full of insects, and let me tell you, Mikey knows his inverts. He is a veritable encyclopedia of Florida wildlife information, and his knowledge of the local dragonfly and damselfly species is second to none. Mikey snagged this shot of a prince basket tail, a unique species of dragonfly that Evan and I had never seen before, and one that Mikey had never seen landed before. Basket tails spend a ton of time flying over their habitat in search of prey, so getting to see one resting is a real treat. As we hiked farther along the water's edge, we got treated to some really cool sightings. Some peninsula cooters lurking around a bridge, a cryptically patterned least bittern trying his best to blend into the reeds, and several more of species on the hunt for breakfast. Our second mammal of the day is this adorable marsh rabbit, and this sighting marked our entrance to a new habitat, a hardwood hammock. This forested area should give us access to a host of new species. This is very exciting. The warming temperatures seem to have attracted a lot of insects to the cool retreat of the understory, so let's see how many we can check off. There's one more area in this park we want to check, a small open patch of sand hills where we have a decent shot at finding the iconic gopher tortoise. However, as soon as we arrived, Mikey called out an exciting find, another dragonfly species that none of us had ever seen before. Got it. Wow. I got that capture on camera. It's a side dragon, but this guy's actually in, I can tell it's sex. Uh, this guy's a male. 
Absolutely amazing. You see it's a male, you can see the uh, paraproct underneath the cerci, right there. Only males have a paraproct. And what do they use them for? Uh, it's for mating purposes. That is awesome. So and also males also have a little bit of a, a bulge in between S2 and S3, you can see. Uh, hold the, uh, that little bulge right there. So for those, male. for those who don't see dragonflies too often, there are a lot of identifying features that you can use to tell dragonflies apart. So when Mikey's talking about S2 and S3, those are parts of the abdomen and the paraproct right at the end of the tail. Yeah, there's two cerci, both males and females have cerci. Only males have paraproct and epiproct at the end as well. So that's how we can identify that this is a male. After releasing the seaside dragonlet, we turned our attention back to finding a gopher tortoise and managed to catch a glimpse of this little guy taking refuge in his burrow. To cap off the morning, we were treated to two spectacular bird observations, and these are actually some of my personal favorite finds of the day. This pileated woodpecker was feeding in a palm tree, presumably in search of insects, and its intense focus allowed us to get some insane footage without it even batting an eye. And as if that wasn't cool enough, this family of loggerhead shrikes was hanging out at a nearby tree. And this was yet another lifer for Evan and I, a species that we've never seen in the wild before. Watching this mother tend to her growing fledglings was adorable, and especially rewarding, because this is a species we have always wanted to see. We are doing really well on the challenge so far. We have over 30 species documented, but we're gonna try a new location soon to get a little more. But what have been your favorite so far? Uh, yeah, my favorite's definitely been catching a seaside dragon for the first time, but we've also gotten plenty of great shots of Prince Basket Tails and uh, other invertebrates. Yeah, we are killing it with the invertebrates, but now we want to try and get some more birds and some more reptiles. We've come to a local park that's famous for its cypress preserves. What do you think we're likely to get, Mikey? Yeah, I think we might find some turtles here. Definitely lots of turtles if the water's more concentrated in the other ways. Definitely awesome. Definitely be some turtles there. Maybe some water snakes, uh, wading birds, and maybe dragonflies if we're looking. Exploring a cypress swamp like this gives us the opportunity to encounter a number of animals we haven't seen yet, especially considering how much water is around. There are loads of fish here, and as a matter of fact, we quickly spotted several different species. There are both native and invasive species present in this area. And right off the bat, we saw some exotic specimens like these Nile tilapia and sailfin mollies. Lurking farther out in the swamp were two native predators who would be more than happy to keep those invasive species numbers in check, the largemouth bass and the Florida gar. These are some seriously cool fish, and we consider ourselves very lucky to have gotten so much usable footage of them. The shade of the forest harbored some really cool invertebrates, and we managed to catch a grasshopper species that we always love to see in Florida. Nice, I got that whole capture. We just caught this Eastern Lover Grasshopper, one of my personal favorite grasshopper species here in Florida. And the reason why for me are those beautiful colors. I find them absolutely incredible. Now, Mikey, you wanna tell us a bit about their Latin name? Yeah, despite being the largest grasshopper and heaviest grasshopper in, in Florida, they're actually, their wings are quite small for a grasshopper. Hence their name, uh, Romalia microptera, which means smaller wings in Latin. You can see they're, they're practically flightless. They can jump and propel themselves short distances with those wings, but they're, based, they're impractical when it comes to flying long distance. Which is one of the reasons why it was so easy for me to get a hand on this guy. But what a beautiful insect. Exploring further into the trees yielded some really special encounters. A cottonmouth curled up in the shade, our lifer yellow-billed cuckoo perched in a tree, and our first ever shots of a slady skimmer a lifer dragonfly for all three of us. Finally, the swamp revealed one more incredible denizen, this stunning red-shouldered hawk. I have never seen a hawk this close in the wild before, and it was absolutely unforgettable to share space with this powerful bird of prey on its own terms like this. After following it briefly and getting some fantastic footage, we decided that this was a fitting end to the day's challenge. 
we absolutely nailed our species goal. We are absolutely ecstatic. Could not have asked for a better day out here. We want to make sure that you guys go check out the YouTube channel Cool Critters because he makes absolutely fantastic wildlife content from down here in Southern Florida. We learn a ton from him every time he uploads and we know you will as well. So Mikey, you wanna mention what you have coming up? Yeah, I'm definitely going to be posting a couple of the highlights from this trip on there because I know I told you my videos are very fast paced so I'm probably only going to post a bunch of the really good stuff that we caught on my channel with some facts and some up close views of uh, all the animals we found as well. Awesome. So with that said, we hope you enjoyed and we will see you in the next one. Alright, ready to get after it? Not really, but thank you. <laughs> 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 We're using that. <laughs> We're using that.